Everybody, welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Mike Nay here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. This is Resurrection Sunday. We are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are so grateful and so thankful for you tuning in to our worship experience today. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, I just want to say welcome to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of my Spirit of Fire family. We love you guys. We miss you guys so much. Listen, we send virtual hugs to everybody. Listen, we want you all to do, do me a favor. Do me a quick favor. We want you to share this now, right now. Share this worship experience on your platforms, on your social media pages right now. And let people know that we are on, okay? We want as many people to come in as possible to hear this word today. We don't believe it's by chance that those that are here today um, have tuned in, but we do believe that the Spirit of God has led you here today and that you're here with us, worshiping with us in spirit and in truth. Praise God. So here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship, we have a motto that simply says that we're changing the culture, igniting a passion and living a dream. Uh, some time ago, the Spirit of God shared with me to go teach his people who they are and understanding their identity, their rights and privileges, their authority as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've endeavored to do that, but we are taking it to another level. God wants us to take this thing, I mean, globally. So, you know, through the World Wide Web, it goes global. We're international instantly. But we want you to help us in making that possible. And so we're just asking everybody, go to our YouTube channel. If you're not watching on there, click subscribe. Give us your likes and your shares and all of that so that we can see the engagement um, that you're there and that, that you're tuning in. So we just thank all of our first timers here today. We just love you guys. Listen, there are a ton of platforms that you could be watching today, but you are here watching us. And so we do not take that lightly. So we wanna say thank you so much for the support that you've given unto us. And so we just thank you all for that. Listen, y'all, today is the day. It's like the Super Bowl for the body of Christ. This is the big, this is the, this is the day and this is the thing that we celebrate. This is what we live for. In the sense of because of death, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we can have life. And so listen, we celebrate it every day, but we understand that this is the day designated that he rose again from that tomb. And so, man, I'm telling you, it is, he rose from the dead so that you and I could live. And so we just, man, we just thank God. So let's just begin to just thank him for that right now. Father, we just thank you for sending your son. Jesus, we thank you for dying for us. We thank you right now that you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And we lift up this service to you today. We thank you right now that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of the living God. We do approach the holy written word reverently. And Father, we thank you right now. With the fruit of our lips, we give thanks. We thank you that signs, wonders, and miracles will follow the preached word of God. We thank you, Father, that we take our lives to another level in you. We thank you right now that you're revealing yourself to people who are watching today. And we don't take it lightly that we are gathering together, even virtually. And we just thank you right now that there is no distance in the spirit. That the same God who abides here in us abides through these airwaves, through this internet connection. Everywhere we are, Father, we are gathered together in your name. And so we just thank you for it. We thank you that your power is present to heal, set free, deliver, and to make whole. Whatever is wrong, make it right. Whatever is rough, make it smooth. Whatever is crooked, make it straight. Father, I pray right now that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened today. That you will speak a word to us that will transform us and that will change us. And so we just thank you for it so much. We cover the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration as the Spirit of God wills. And so, Father, we give you all glory. We elevate your word and we thank you that you confirm your word with signs following. So, Father, we thank you that Jesus died to take the limitations off of our lives, to bring us out of containment into the freedom and newness of life. So we just thank you this day that you are manifesting yourself to us, through us and for us. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for it now. In the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey guys, God bless you so much. For those that are just tuning in, I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We love you guys. We here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship. 
are here to change a culture, ignite a passion and live a dream. Listen, we just thank God for you here today. We, we, we've been talking about and we've been dealing with um, the series, The God of the Breakthrough. And one of the things that we started last week dealing with destroying the walls of containment. And so the, the message today, and I want to continue along these lines, but the message today is called I'm coming out. Listen, this is the day that we celebrate the death, burial and resurrection of Christ that he went for three days and three nights and he was in the heart of the earth in hell. And the Bible says he took the keys of death, hell and the grave. And listen, he led captivity captive. Then he said he gave gifts unto men. And now we've been raised up in the newness of life with him. The Bible declares in Ephesians two and six that we're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. And see, we're seated together with him far above. The Bible says all principality and power and might and dominion. And for those that may be watching that you're not born again, you can be a partaker of this grace where you can get this dominion and this power that God has granted and given unto us. You know what? Even as I begin to preach this message, Satan always tries to come to shut down the word of God from coming forth. And so, listen, we have an adversary called the devil. Hell is a real place. But God did not create hell for man. He created it for Satan and his angels when there was a great rebellion in heaven. And Jesus came to redeem mankind. We know that in the book of Genesis, the Bible talks about God creating man in his image and after his likeness. And he gave us dominion. He created us to be fruitful, to, to multiply, to subdue, to replenish and to have dominion in this earth, to be productive and to be fruitful in all that we do. We understand that Satan came in and he deceived Adam and Eve and they turned over that authority in the earth to him and that Satan became the God little G of this world system. But then God had a plan. He says, I'm going to send my son to take on the form of human flesh, to take on the sins of the world. So Christ came to die for all mankind from the best of us to the worst of us. We all were sinners in need of a savior. And so the Bible declares that all have sinned and come short of, of the glory of God. But then it also goes on to say it all can be made righteous. And so for those who receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It says in the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, and because we've been made righteous, not based on our own works, but based on the finished work of Christ, that Jesus died to take on the sins of the world. Everybody sinned. And all they have to do, any man, woman, child, boy, girl, bond or free has to do is just accept and receive what Jesus has done. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm telling you, all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come inside my heart. I receive you in my life. I make you the Lord of my life. It doesn't have to be this big fancy prayer. Just simply telling him, I acknowledge you as Lord. I acknowledge you as my savior, my redeemer. And I've received the work that you've done for me, the finished work you dying, taking on my sin. So I wouldn't have to receive the penalty or the punishment of that sin. And Jesus said, listen, if you just open up your heart to me, I'll come on in. I'll now create in you a brand new spirit. He says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Why? Because you've been made a new creation, new creature in Christ. So listen, all you got to do is accept him. All you got to do is receive him. All you got to do is say, Lord, come inside my heart now. I receive you now. I make you the Lord of my life. Enter into my heart now, Lord. Enter into me now, creating me a clean heart. Renew that right spirit in me. And I receive your precious Holy Spirit to abide and to live and to dwell in me now. Come inside my heart now, Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. I make you the Lord of my life. Not just Savior, but I make you Lord. That means I will obey you from this day forward. I turn my life over to you. I submit myself. My will becomes your will. And Father, I take on your will. Your will becomes my will. I do what you tell me to do. I'll follow you. I'll obey you all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved. I'm born again. 
I'm delivered. I'm set free. Now watch this. I, I've never haven't done this. I don't know in a long time. I just felt I just flowed right into it. I just felt led to flow right into it. That when you become born again, you are now partaker of the grace of God, the goodness of God. I mean, all of the promises of God that are yes and amen, the Bible says. That means it is so that what God said, he meant it. We just have to believe it and we have to begin to walk in it. And that we need, we need to have that confidence, that confidence in God and his word, that confidence. And now as a born again child of God, listen, you are part of the family of God. You are part of heaven's creed. Listen, I'm telling you, you are, you are born again now. You go into heaven. But God wants you to live victoriously here on this earth. And so now he created us in his image and after his likeness to go forth and to do good works in the earth and to demonstrate his power, to demonstrate his glory, to demonstrate his goodness. God loves you. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you showing up today. And as I always say, I don't believe it's by chance that you came on this broadcast today. I don't believe it's by chance that just out of curiosity, I believe it was the spirit of God leading you to come on this platform today to hear this message and to get born again. Some of you may have just snuck in just to see. Some of you may be people that I know and haven't seen or talked to in years, but you just wanted to say, man, let me just see what Mike is doing today. And God led you here to hear this message. You've been in despair. You've been defeated for too long. And I'm telling you now that the risen Lord wants to raise you up out of your situation. He wants to bring you out of that pit. He wants you to experience the newness of life, that there is freedom in Christ. Yes, yeah, Satan, I'm coming after you, Satan. I'm coming after you, devil. I'm telling you, listen, the enemy, the devil, he goes about, the Bible says, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus says, I'm come that you might have life but I want you to have it more abundantly. And so it's abundant living that God wants us to have. And Satan will endeavor to contain you. He will try to hold you captive. And one of the things that Jesus says in John 8, 31 and 32, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples or disciplined ones indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He says, when you know the truth, the truth of his word, when you begin to now become acquainted with God and his word, when you become acquainted with that word, how? Through reading, through meditation of that word, that that word begins to become a part of you. It begins to form how you think and how you believe and how you feel about situations that you realize that, wait a minute, I'm a disciple of Christ. That means there are disciplines in my life. And so, listen, I'm telling you, I can, I can tell that some of you out there is like, you know what? I'm tired of being undisciplined in areas. I'm tired of this situation overcoming my life on a continuous basis. I'm tired of bad cycles. Jesus said, here, I'm your deliverance and I'm your freedom. Walk in my way and you will experience the deliverance and the freedom you've always desired, you've always wanted. One of the ways that Satan tries to contain us and tries to hold us captive is number one through ignorance. That word ignorance sim simply means lack of knowledge or education or awareness. Sometimes you're just not aware of certain things. You just haven't been taught certain things in your life. So many times in church, you know, and coming up in some churches, things have shifted and things have changed over the years. That is not just about a good feeling, but it's, a, it's about God releasing not only information, but revelation according to his word that will cause impartation. What do I mean? That word getting in you, God's understanding of his word getting in you so that now you can experience the manifestation of it. The, 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 the things created in your life that your life is going from one place to the next. And God is saying this, I want you to grow in me. I want you to develop in me. The book of Hosea four and six says it like this. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. Then he says, I will also reject thee that thou should not be a priest um, unto me. Now, the thing is this, he says, people are destroyed because of what they don't know. 
but God has not only sent his son, Jesus, he's also sent someone called Holy Spirit, the precious spirit of the living God who lives, who wants to dwell in a bad in you to teach you all things, to guide you into all truth, that he's the one that breathes on this word to allow us to understand it even better. And through our discipline of studying and reading on that word, but not only reading and studying it, but applying it to our lives that we begin to grow in the word of God. And as you begin to grow in the word of God, there will be certain things that will begin to come off of you. Because he says, remember, going back to John and eight, he says, and you shall know the truth. Verse 32, and the truth shall make you free. As you begin to study this word and apply it to your life, you'll begin to grow into it. And all of a sudden, the things that have held you captive, that have bound you in your life. Some of you might have been struggling with addictions, whether it's with alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, whatever it is. Listen, bad relationships. You can't help but to stop cheating on people because you haven't learned how to control yourself. And, and a lot of times it's because really you're trying to use those illicit relationships to solve an issue that's a spiritual matter and trying to fill that void of loneliness. But God is saying, I'm here to set you free today. I'm here to deliver you and to make you whole. He says, I love you. And he's given us everything the Bible says that pertains to life and godliness. The book of Proverbs chapter four, verse five, the amplified version reads it like this. He says, get skillful in godly wisdom. He says, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, interpretation. He says, do not forget and do not turn back from the words of my mouth. Scripture tells us that the way of the transgressor is hard. So that means there are times where we understand and God reveals his word to us. But then we take that word and we begin to say, you know what, God, I want to still try it my way. But God is saying this. If you do what I tell you, you'll reap the results, the rewards and the benefits of it. He's calling you. He's saying, if you truly want to be free, you can walk in that freedom. You can walk in that deliverance. This is why Jesus died for us. He died and took on everything, all the sin, all the pressure, all the temptation, so that we can be free from it. He wants us free, and he wants us to walk in the newness of life. And I'm telling you, this adversary called Satan, he will try, and the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren, and he'll come to your mind, and he'll try to hound you with mistakes of the past, and he'll try to make you think like you're nothing, and he'll try to make you think that your life is over and there's no way out, and that, you know what, this is just how it's going to be from here on out. But I'm here to tell you that God is saying, no, there is transformation. There is growth. There is a way out. And he says, I've already made that way available to you. So he says this, I want you to take my word. I want you to begin to put it on your mouth and declare and decree whom the son has set free is free indeed. I want you to begin to say that even right now, even if you got to type it in that I declare that I'm free. I declare that I'm whole whom the son has set free is free indeed. So I declare that I am free in every area, whether it's fear, just the bondage of fear that some of you may have been dealing with just fear about things, fear that you're not going to live past a certain age, fear that you're going to have the same thing that your mother or father did, fear of the same thing that held them captive is going to hold you captive. And God is saying, I'm even destroying, I've destroyed generational curses with the blood of Jesus because of what he's done. When you receive Christ, you receive the fullness and the freedom to now even change the game and begin to change your generational makeup. That even though the things that they dealt with that you are dealing with, God's saying, I'm going to bring you out and it's not going to affect your children or your children's children. He says, I'm here today. The spirit of living God, of the living God, I'm telling you, is here to set free, is here to make whole. Whatever is wrong, he wants to make it right. Whatever is rough, he wants to make it smooth. There may be husbands and wives sitting right here watching. I just see this, that the spirit of God wants you even just grab one another's hands and just begin to pray for one another and love on one another. 
and just say, okay, we doing this thing together. We coming out of this situation together. We gonna overcome together. That you gathering your families together. That God is saying, not only you individually, but you collectively, not just you, but you and your children. As for you and your household, you're gonna experience the goodness of God. So I declare it and decree it in the name of Jesus. Satan has tried to come to contain you, but Jesus came to liberate you. Yeah. God is a good God. God is a good God. The next area that Satan tries to come to contain you is through distractions. <laughs> Man, we've all dealt with distractions in life. Distraction by definition means mental confusing. He's trying to confuse you so that you won't move forward. And if you keep now, if he keeps messing with your mind, we're dealing with mental illness like we've never seen. And a lot of times it's, it's because it's a spiritual matter that people sometimes don't realize that they're going through. It's warfare in their mind. The battlefield of their mind where Satan is trying to bring confusion so that you don't know how to come out of that situation. But we come against it right now with you in the name of Jesus. That clarity will come to your life. Great clarity, great insight, great wisdom. It also means to be discombobulated or perplexed. And it simply means to draw your attention away from something else or to move away your focus. God is saying, I need you to refocus now in life. There's a power and ability that dwells and abides on the inside of you that if you now just take that and he says, I need this is why it's important when the Bible declares to write the vision for your life and to make it plain so that those that read it can run with it. God wants you to be laser focused because now Satan will try to come and sometimes just your feelings, just situations in life show up that try to suck the life out of you, that try to get you off course, get you off focus. But God is saying, I'm giving a boost to your faith today. And I want you to begin to lock in once again to the thing that I told you to do. And he says, I'm going to give you a new energy. I'm going to give you a new strength to overcome those things. And where Satan, and it's like every time you try to move forward, there is something, some force trying to hold you back. And I destroy it and I break it off your life now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power that's present to heal. The book of James 1, 5 through 8 says it like this. If any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. That means God is not holding back wisdom when you ask him for it. But this is the kicker. It says, but let them ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that waver is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So it's like that, that person, <clears throat> he says, don't waver. Don't, you know, when the situation changes, you change. Every time something pops up, it gets you off course. It gets you off focus. And God is saying, I need you to lock in. It says, for he that waver is like the, um, the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Why? Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. This is how Satan tries to keep you in bondage and try to keep you contained. It's through distractions and it's through now throwing situations in your life to try to get you off course and to get you off focus, to get you to stop believing. God says, I'm working on your believing again. I sense the, just the power of God that's coming into people's lives, that's helping you to come out of that pit, that's coming, that's coming to help you. And I rebuke the, listen, I'm telling you, I rebuke the enemy right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I sense it like, man, I can't tell you how, I'm sensing, how strong I'm sensing this. You want to know why? Satan tried to come and hit me with it. And he tried to get me to get distracted. And what happens is when you get distracted over what you didn't do or what could have been done or this, that, or the other, then he tries to bring depression in. But God is saying this, you are breaking out of that thing and you will experience the success that I've always called for you to have. And you need to now rise up strong in your authority and the victory that Jesus has given you. The Bible declares this, Jesus said it himself in Luke 10, 19, behold, 
I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And it's time for you now to now open up your mouth and rebuke that rascal, to rebuke that thing that's coming to your mind to distract you. And God is saying this, I've given you life, baby. I've given you life, son. I've given you life, daughter. And I want you to walk in the newness of it. It's time to refresh your vision. It's time to refresh your dream. It's time to move forward in it. God going to give you a new swagger in your life. He's going to now begin to stir you up. Even the most holy emotions on the inside of you. My prayer is that even the gift of faith will begin to manifest. Where you will be able to supernaturally believe for things to take place. Come on, somebody. Say, I agree. Say, I agree. Type, I agree right now. Type, I agree. Type, amen. So be it. It is so. Whew. Sometimes what happens is you're spending so much, so much time trying to figure out something that is keeping you from progressing forward. <laughs> God helping some of you come out of overthinking. And just say, he just saying, step. Do what's in your heart. Trust the leading of your spirit that's now been re recreated and born again and made new. Why? Because God says my life and my nature abides in you now. So trust that inward witness, trust that leading, trust that prompting because God is bringing you out into. When Satan brings distractions and watch this, when Satan brings distractions, he's trying to take something from you. When Satan brings distractions, he's trying to take something from you. That's why it's time to refocus. The third area that Satan tries to contain us is through deception. In other words, deception is giving a false impression of something. It's to cause to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. That, that's man. He's trying to get you to believe a negative, bad actually wrong report God's saying that you're free he's saying that you're gonna always be bound God's saying I've made you successful Satan is saying you know what ain't nothing gonna ever work out for you he's trying to deceive you out of who you are you've already been made righteous you've already been made a king and a priest you're already an ambassador for Christ you're already listen you're already good with God and Satan will keep trying to make you think that you're no good because of the mistakes. I keep messing up. I keep just, man, God, I keep screwing up stuff. Every time I turn around, it seems like every decision that I make is a bad one. And Satan is getting you to get into fear so that you won't move forward because you're afraid that you're going to make the wrong choice. But I come against that spirit of fear now. And you will make the right choice. You will make the right decision. Because God is your backer. God is your underwriter. He's the one that's your source. He's your supply. In Jesus' name, glory to God. I'm telling you, it's time to walk in truth. It's time to walk in victory. There's certain things you've been ensnared with. There's certain things that have been holding you captive. But the power of God is present to heal you this day. The power of God is present to set you free. You've already been made free because when you got born again, you came out of darkness into the marvelous light of God's dear son. You're already seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Man, I'm telling you, I'm here to encourage you today. Just like Jesus got up, you need to get up. Just like Jesus came out, you need to come out. Will the real you stand up today? He said, I'm telling you, you are better than you ever thought you were. You are in prime position, baby. You are in prime position to move forward. You are in prime position for, to see that success come to pass. You are in prime position to see that relationship work out. You are in prime position to see that business work out. You are in prime position to see that freedom. I don't care how long you've been on the drugs. I declare you are free now. I declare you're free. I command the taste of the heroin to come out of you. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, Lord.
Because the Lord says signs, wonders, and miracles will begin to manifest. Jesus rose so you can rise up. Be free today. Be free from migraine headaches. From the stress. Yeah, migraine headaches are being healed. Now, in the name of Jesus, receive it. Stop being so stressed out. God is a good God. God is a restorer. God wants to restore everything that the enemy has stolen. I declare it now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Experience the freedom of God today. Some of you are trying to go back to stuff, but there will be, watch this, just like there was a force drawing you to it, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to bring you out of it and draw you away from it and cut off things. I cut off things right now that have tried to come in to woo you away from God and to lure you away from God. I shut down the transmission in Jesus' name. Come on. You say, well, oh, you can't do that. Listen, I can rebuke just like you can rebuke. We're going to do it together. It's time for you to see yourself as God created you. <laughs> I want you to say this after me. Repeat this after me. The Bible declares you shall decree things and they shall be established. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Whatsoever things you shall say, doubt not in your heart, but believe. Believe that those things will come to pass. You're going to have what you say. I want you to say this after me right now. Say, I am the body of Christ. And Satan has no power over me. For I overcome evil with good. Say I am of God and have overcome Satan. For greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Say I will fear no evil. For God is with me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say I rebuke the wicked one, and he must flee from me. Let's make it personal. Say, Satan, I rebuke you. I renounce you. I reject you in the name of Jesus. Now, some of you need to say, whatever that thing is that's been hounding you, you need to speak to that thing. Whether it's the cigarettes, whether it's the alcohol, whether it's whatever it is, you reject it. Say, I reject you and I resist you in the name of Jesus for I have been made free. Yeah, even those unholy desires, things that you know that ain't of God, you begin to reject and resist those things. Why? Because you got a new nature now. See, I'm even speaking to the people who got born again at the beginning of this message. That you're alive in Christ. I'm showing you how to maintain the freedom that Jesus came to possess for us. Glory to God. We have been made free and whom the son has set free is free indeed. Glory to God. So I declare, yeah, in the name of Jesus that you are free. Bring it up. Bring the music just a little bit more. Yeah, you are free. 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 Yeah. This is a new season. This is a new day. This is a new day for you. We here and we love you. God is a good God. He wants to do you good and to make you happy. The word of the Lord has been spoken today. I want you to rejoice right now. Lift up your hands wherever you are and begin to thank God in your homes, wherever you are, on your computers, on your devices, just begin to thank him. Father, I thank you. Just begin to say, I just thank you for setting me free. Say, Lord Jesus, I honor you this day. And I, I celebrate your death, burial, and resurrection to bring me into the newness of life. And we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for freedom. We thank you that sin no longer has dominion over us, for we walk as the righteousness of God. We abide in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made us free from the law of sin and death. Father, we thank you that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Huh. Who? I just feel like saying it like this. For my Spanish, Hispanic brothers and sisters, glory a Dios. Glory a Dios. 
Glory a Dios. Glory to God. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening, the power is present to heal. The power is, I'm telling you, God is there with you, right there with you in your homes. For some of you, you're sensing God's power. You're sensing his presence. You said, Lord, oh God, yeah. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you now. Watch this. There's another experience. That means the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. I know for some of you, it's been a weird thing. You've seen people act strange and funny and all of those things, but God's power, his ability, the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit himself is there to dwell in you, to abide in you, to live in you. Say, so come inside my heart now. I receive you, Holy Spirit. I receive you, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, God's power is present. <laughs> mm. The Bible declares this. Whom the Son hath set free is free indeed. For those that are listening right now, just do me a favor. Type in, I'm free. Just say, I'm free. Do what you can. Some of you might just be watching us on YouTube. You can't get and type it in. I understand all those things. <laughs> but if you're able to, just type in, I'm free. Right there, say it out your mouth. I'm free. I'm free. You're going to another level. You're going to another level, glory to God. You're going to another level in life, saints. You're going to another level. I declare this is a time of great harvest for you in your life. I declare and decree in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all is well with you and your household. I declare and decree right now that things are turning around for your favor and for your good. I declare that the favor of God is manifesting on your behalf, changing policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions right now in the name of Jesus to favor you. I declare new contracts coming to you. I declare new jobs that God is shifting and changing your financial situations. I declare and decree right now that you will live long and strong and that you are healed and made whole and that when you go back to the doctor that you will get a good diagnosis and a good report in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree that your mind is at peace. I declare and decree that you will rest well. I come against night terrors right now in Jesus name. I rebuke night terrors. I declare and decree that you will rest well, that you will sleep well, that you have a peaceful sleep and a sweet rest. I want, I want, I'm going to go somewhere real quick with that. Somebody dealing with night terrors. You're afraid to even go to sleep because of some of the things that you've been dreaming. I want to share with you something I used to do It's out of the book of Proverbs is a scripture. And I believe it's in, it may be 328. Oh man. Proverbs chapter, I think it's chapter three. I want to try to find it for you. I didn't intend on going here, but it just, I could quote it, but I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm getting you to the right reference. Yeah. In um, Proverbs 324, it says, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. It says, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. You declare, I do it to this day. When I sleep, I pray before I go to sleep. My sleep shall be sweet. I rebuke the spirit of fear for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When I lay down, my sleep shall be sweet. Glory to God. I rebuke wicked, evil and perverted dreams. I listen, I come against all that stuff. I declare and decree it in the name of Jesus that you are made whole. You are made whole. Come on, spirit of fire. Come on, spirit of fire nation. I want y'all, some of y'all, you, you're receiving it, but I want you to be in prayer and agreement with me for even others that are tuning in today that may not normally be tuning in. I sense something happening. I sense God moving and doing something in your midst. I sense things manifesting on your behalf. We're here with you. We love you.
I declare it is well with you in your house. So on this resurrection Sunday, some of you mark this day that this was your turnaround day. Mark this day on your calendar. Mark this day on your calendar. And a year from now, come back and see, that was my turning point. That was the point I received who I am in Christ. And I received the fullness of the promises of God. I received my confidence back. Glory to God. Some of you need to open up your curtains. Let light come in. You've been sitting in darkness too long. Walk in the light. Glory to God. And yeah. Have a fresh perspective in life. Jesus died to give you a new, a new life, a new city and a new life in him. Praise God. We love you guys so much. We've already prayed for those for salvation, but maybe somebody logged on. In the meantime, and you begin to pick up on this message and you didn't pray the prayer when I gave it in the beginning, but there may be somebody here right now. You never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You say, yes, I want this new life. I want I want to turn around. I need a turn around now, Pastor Mike. I need a turn around now. Come on, man of God. Pray with me. OK, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're the Christ. The son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Now watch this. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father. For giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus name. Amen. Now there may be somebody. Listen. Congratulations. You're a part of the family of God. We celebrate life with you. If that's you. We want to know who you are. Listen. Reach out to us. Message us. Connect with us. Let us know. Hey. I got born again today. We want to be able to send you something. To begin to help you in developing your life in Christ. Listen, oh man, my heart is for you to grow. Our heart is for you to grow and to develop in the things of God. Listen, if you don't have a church home, we recommend Spirit of Fire Fellowship to you. We're here to love on you and to watch over you, to pray for you, to feed you the word of God, to help you develop, to give you the sense of community and family. That's why we're fellowship. God gave me that name years ago to ignite a passion and fire in you for the kingdom of God, God's way of doing and being right, but also to a place, a safe haven, a place of fellowship, a place of belonging. Many of you feel disconnected from places and it's like, I just don't feel like I'm connected anywhere. God wants you to be connected to a family. We welcome you here today. If that's you, please send us a notice. Let us know. We want to connect with you guys. We'll have someone from our staff um, follow up to help you obtain and maintain what you came to receive. And there are those out there, you're like, you know what? I'm a part of a ministry, but I also want to, I love what you're doing. And I want to become a partner with this work. Just let us know who you are. And we'll help you achieve and accomplish that as well. Listen, y'all. We love you. We appreciate you. But more importantly, God loves you. God appreciates you. And I'm telling you, your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. Some of you may feel overwhelmed. It's like, I don't know how to get to where I need to go. This is why we're here to help. And then two, to help teach you. Take it step by step, day by day, moment by moment. We're here to help you to develop a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. You can begin to hear God for yourself and begin to follow his leading and guiding and directing, but to also give you wisdom, information, and impartation to help you make wise choices and decisions in life. That's what God's word is for. It's our instructions here on this planet. He tells us how to live. He tells us how to function. And we want to be here to help you. We love you so much. At this time, we're going to honor God. We're, this is the first Sunday that we have communion. 
And we honor, what better day <laughs> to have it? That we understand that the death, burial, and resurrection, that the body, the bread representing the body that was broken for us. The Bible declares that Jesus took the lashes, the cat of nine tails, and he took 39 lashes. And it is documented, proved by doctors that there are 39 categories of diseases that all other diseases fall up under. That's an amazing thing. That the foresight of God, that means every disease known to man has been covered through the stripes that Jesus took on his body at that cross, even before going to Golgotha's cross. That he took our sicknesses and diseases. He bore them on his body and he became sick so that we could be healed. He shed his blood. The Bible declares without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or taking away of sin. Jesus took on the sins of the world, man. I'm telling you, everybody's sins, he took it on. On that cross. And so God had to turn his back on his son. And that's when Jesus said, Father, Father, why is thou forsaking me? Because watch this, the destructive nature of sin. Jesus, the father knew Jesus had to fulfill it so that mankind could be born again. Oh, man. Jesus suffered so that we wouldn't have to. We're partakers of his power, his authority, his nature. The more I think about it, the more it blows my mind. God lives. He wants to come and live in us, man, and dwell in us and to live through us. Oh, man, what a precious gift we have. So at this time, for those that have your elements, you could go run to the kitchen real quick if you need to. Grab a piece of bread or cracker or whatever. We're going to partake of communion together. And Jesus said, He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. It's something about the breaking of it. His body was torn. It was to the point that he was really unrecognizable. That's how bad they beat him. Sometimes these, this, the movies that we've seen don't depict it the, the actual way. It, it, it would look like a horror movie, how gruesome looking like raw, just raw meat hanging. Now listen, I have to be vivid about this because you got to understand the level of suffering. The cat of nine tails, it had pieces of metal and rock and sharp jagged edges that when it would be, a person would be whipped with it, it would dig into the flesh and then rip out chunks of flesh. It's not just like a regular whip that we see nowadays, much worse. And he took the ultimate penalty. So in the name of Jesus, whatever sickness or disease you've been dealing with, you can receive your healing right now. Right now. Let every disease, every abnormal growth come off and out of bodies now in Jesus' name. Let, yeah, let, who? Let nodules be dissolved and uprooted. Cyst shrink and shrivel up and become no more. Yeah, we rebuke cancerous cells in physical bodies. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus as we honor you and honor your table and honor this communion table. Jesus said it like this. This is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you eat this and do this, do this, he said in remembrance of me. Let's eat. Bible declares, after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he is supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament or new covenant in my blood. This new covenant ratified this new agreement now. For by grace are we saved through faith, not of our works. He brought us out from under the law and into the newness of, of life. 
Jesus said, I'm a, God said it like this. I'm going to take out of you a heart of stone, put into you a heart of flesh. And he says, I'm going to write my laws upon your heart and I'm going to put my spirit within you to cause you to be able to walk in my statutes." So we no longer are ruled under the commandments and the dictates of the law, but ruled by the governing of the Holy Spirit who abides in us. That listen, when we are led by the Spirit and we walk in the commandment of love, we won't break the Ten Commandments. We won't do those things. The Ten Commandments was to show men their sin, but it couldn't do anything about it. It was holy, complete and perfect but it couldn't do anything about the condition of a, of a man's heart. That's why Jesus came to die so that we can have divine access to the father. That's why when Jesus said it is finished and the Bible says there was this veil that was rent from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, showing that we have access directly to God now. And he come, he no longer abides in temple made with man's hands, but he now abides on the temple that he created. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are God's temple. He abides in us. He lives in us. He dwells in us. Glory to God. And Jesus' blood made all of that possible. You are free from sin, guilt, and shame. Let the shame go. He says, often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Hallelujah. Walk in your freedom. Walk in your deliverance. We love you guys so much. At this time, we want to honor God. Even in our giving, this is a time of worship, just as much a time of worship as any other. There's information that's coming up on your screen. Honor God. Sow your resurrection seed. Yeah, you know what? I'm planting this seed by faith. I'm, a, I'm expecting certain things to resurrect in my life. I'm expecting certain things to come alive again. I'm expecting things to take place and to happen. As you give, there's nothing wrong with expecting harvest off of a seed that you sow. No more than there's nothing wrong with a farmer. When they sow a seed in the ground, it's right for them to expect to see a harvest come forth of a seed that they planted in the ground. God wants to give you tremendous harvest. I declare your harvest season now in Jesus' name. So that information is there. You can give different platforms in which you can give. We love you guys. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. As you give, it should be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. He's going to cause men to give it to your bosom. God wants to give you witty inventions, ideas, and concepts to help prosper you. Jesus died for your prosperity as well. Your total life prosperity, which includes your finances. He wants you to live well. The Bible says Jesus became poor so that we through his poverty might be made rich. Rich means abundant supply, full provision, overflow, more than enough. He wants you to walk in it. The Bible declares that wealth and riches shall be in your house. God wants you. He's given us the power, the ability to obtain wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18, to establish his covenant in the earth. God wants you to walk in this wealth. It's okay but he doesn't want us to be covetous, seeking after things, then we, instead of seeking after him. Listen, listen, money makes a lousy master, but it makes an excellent servant. Money only takes on the identity of the person who has it in their hands. It's an amplifier. If you're doing good with little, you get more, you can do more good. I'm telling you, God wants you to walk in abundance. So as you give, give out of a cheerful heart, expect to receive. Now, Father, I bless the seed sown into this ministry. I declare supernatural harvest in return in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, thank you all so much for tuning in. We're out of time, but certainly not out of message. I pray that something that's been shared has been a blessing to your life. So once again, on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in today and worshiping with us. We want to thank Brother R.J. Rufus Johnson for coming in. Go and support that brother's stuff. I'm telling you, you can go on iTunes. He has a hit out called Thank You right now. Go out and please support him. Please support him. Purchase it. Purchase it to help support the ministry. Also, he and his wife, they have a fund for um, HBCU 
um, to hand out scholarships. We as a ministry, we're going to be a blessing to them as well. But listen, we want you to go out, follow them, let them know, hey, support them. We want to get people educated, get them in the school system, help supply. Listen, that's what they, that's, listen, that's what the wealth is for. Blessed to be a blessing to all families of the earth have been blessed. Praise God. So we love you guys so much. And I declare and decree as a final benediction, may the hand of God be upon you. May God's protection manifest on your behalf. May you see God's goodness in the land of the living. May all that your hand touch prosperous, flourish, and work. That you function in the perfect will of God for your life. We bless you. We thank you. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all, guys. Love you so much. Appreciate you. God bless you. See you next time. What we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship, changing the culture, igniting the passion, and living the dream. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.